Hello and welcome. Today we will make um, the Ahava baby blanket together. If you've uh, seen my tutorials before, welcome back. And if this is your first time, thank you very much for stopping by. My name is Mirka and I make stitch and pattern crochet and Tunisian crochet tutorials. So if this is of your interest, please consider subscribing and letting me know in the comment section below what you think about the tutorial. So without further ado, let's dive in. So as I mentioned in the intro, today we will be making the Ahava baby blanket together and I'm super excited about sharing this tutorial with you because this is my one of my, if not the most popular pattern um, in terms of uh, sales and also in terms of feedback and if you struggled with the instructions before, if you weren't really sure how to do the stitches, so now this is your time, you'll be able to make your own blanket. So the final measurements are about 28 times 28 inches um, in the pattern, which is on my blog and also in my love crafts and Ravelry shops. Uh, I'll leave the links uh, in the description below. You'll be able to adjust the measurements. The um, I have a baby blanket is a combination of very few stitches and the, the beauty of the blanket is really the yarn that you will use. So I used a self-stripping yarn um, that changes um, color beautifully. So that's the real beauty of this blanket that you can take it to the next level by selection of the real beautiful yarn. To make the blanket, you will need a six millimeter Tunisian crochet hook and worsted weight yarn. The blanket um, is made using uh, simple stitches and stitch combinations. So we will start with the honeycomb section, which is alternation of Tunisian simple and pearl stitches. Then we move on to the pinstripe section, which is also alternation of Tunisian simple and pearl stitches in a different ratio than the honeycomb section. And finally, the four stitch pattern, which is Tunisian simple and Tunisian slanted stitch. Tunisian slanted stitch is also known as Tunisian twisted stitch. So the terminology there might be a little bit ambiguous, but we'll go every, through everything, all the stitches very slowly. So we'll make sure that you will use the correct stitch. Okay. So today I'm going to be using for the demonstration, I'm going to be using paint box simply chunky and eight millimeter Tunisian crochet hook just to make it um, really visible. As um, per any Tunisian crochet project, you will start with a slip knot. And we will be chaining an even number of stitches. Okay, so we yarn over and pull through yarn over pull through so that's two chains okay so i've got eight now and i can do two more okay nine and so the first draw of tunisian crochet or the foundation draw is by adding stitches and working through the back bumps of your chain stitches. So we'll turn the chains around, work from front to back under the back bump of the chain stitches, yarn over and pull up a loop. And we will repeat this for every chain that we've created. So if you would like to make the exact measurements um, for the blanket as is in the pattern you would chain 102 so for the small size of the baby blanket it would be chaining 102 so I've, I'm at the end of my Tunisian foundation row I've still got 10 stitches I haven't missed any chains and then we will um, do the standard return pass which is yarn over chain one and then repeating yarn over pull through two all the way to the end 
and that's our standard return pass. We will then begin the first section, the honeycomb section. And this would be the row um, that with alternating Tunisian simple and Tunisian pearl stitches. So work to this simple, which is inserting hook from right to left under the front vertical bar, yarn over and pull up a loop. It's Tunisian simple. So Tunisian pearl stitch, we are going with yarn uh, being in front of the hook or on the front. We insert the hook as if for Tunisian simple. So we are going from right to left under the front vertical bar yarn over and pull up loop and we'll repeat that again Tunisian simple and Tunisian pearl stitch we'll repeat this, this stitch combination to the end of the row and we will finish the row with an end stitch or edge stitch depending on what terminology you use so it's different names the same stitch so we will turn the last stitch towards ourselves and we see that there are two strands of yarn one on the right and one on the left so we need to insert the hook under both of these yarn over and pull up a loop okay and that's your last stitch for this row and we'll continue working standard return pass yarn over and pull up a loop or chain one yarn over pull through two all the way to the end of the row so we will get back to the beginning of next row okay so this was row number two now on to row number number three we will swap the stitches so while before we started with tunisian simple stitch now we are going to be working tunisian pearl in there and where we had Tunisian pearl stitch we'll work Tunisian simple there so we will swap them around so starting with Tunisian pearl and Tunisian simple pearl simple to the end of the row and this will be followed by Tunisian I'm sorry followed by the end stitch and standard return pass okay so these are set, um, rows number two and three they will be now repeated um, for until row nine so we will repeat row two and three a few more times up to row number nine so what i'm going to do i'm going to um, make two more rows so i will add row number four and five and then we will get to the next section So I've done um, the rows four and five now, and I will skip the row six to nine, which are essentially the repetition of row two and three. So you will know how to start your blanket and how to work the first section. So this would be this section here. And now we are going to be I'm going to show you how to create this section with these ridges. We will work Tunisian 
um, simple and pearl. We will alternate them within the rows and we will repeat this in the consecutive rows. So while in the honeycomb um, stitch section, we alternated the stitches within rows and between rows. Now in the next section, we will only alternate the stitches within rows, but we will keep the sequence between rows. So I'm going to show you what I mean. And this is essentially a repetition of row number two. So on the blanket as per the pattern, you will repeat the row for rows 10 to 17. You will repeat row number two. So let's have a look how this would look. So we will do Tunisian simple, pearl, simple, pearl, simple, pearl, repeating the sequence of the stitches to the end followed by standard return pass and I will work few more rows maybe two or three rows I meet you when I finish and so you will see how the stitch pattern starts to develop once you've you've worked a few rows of this stitch pattern Now I've worked a three, four rows of the pinstripe stitch pattern and you can see how the Tunisian simple stitches create these, these rows of raised stitches and the ter of Tunisian pearl stitches create these valleys. So this is the second um, stitch pattern in this uh, blanket pattern. So we started with the honeycomb stitch pattern. This is the pinstripe stitch pattern and now we will work the waffle stitch. So in the waffle stitch pattern, again, we will be using Tunisian simple stitch and we will alternate this with the Tunisian slanted stitch. So Tunisian simple and the Tunisian slanted stitch, I would say, is the, the trickiest stitch in this blanket. But once you get uh, the hang of it, I'm sure that you will just sail through it through this section. So while bef now up to now we were working this the stitches from right to left like so however in the tunisian slanted stitch we will be going from the other side so we'll be going from left to right like so work the yarn into the hook under the loop sometimes there is a need to help it a little bit with your finger yarn over and pull up a loop okay so what this does it pushes the front vertical bar to the other stitch creating this roof like shape so again we will work Tunisian simple and then Tunisian slanted so we are going from left to right under the stitch yarn over and pull up a loop Tunisian simple and Tunisian slanted again I'll show you the yarn split on me there okay so we'll go under there from left to right yarn over pull up a loop and the last two Tunisian simple Tunisian slanted like so and end stitch Again, we are following this with standard return pass. So 
so this would be row uh, number and for row number 19 we will work the same stitches but we will work them in the other way around okay so we will start with Tunisian slanted stitch followed by Tunisian simple Tunisian slanted Tunisian simple and so on all the way to the end of your row so you offset the stitches by one and this create this beautiful stitch pattern so this section the waffle stitch section consists of two rows which would be according to the pattern rows 18 and 19 and you will repeat this up to rows 25 and after the row 25 you will repeat these sections over and over again with the last section of the blanket being the honeycomb stitch section so this would be up to if you follow the pattern this would be up to row 81 and then the row number 82 is the bind you're happy with the length of your blanket you will then work a tunisian simple stitch bind off so we will go into the stitches as if for tunisian simple stitch so from right, right to left yarn over pull up a loop but then we will continue for the loop which is already on the hook so you will only ever have one loop on the hook again like so and you will do this for all the stitches in your last row so as you can see you are forming um, a row on the top of your project which looks very much like the rows of chain that you started your project with so you're repeating this for every stitch including the end stitch okay so you have the last loop on the hook once you are at the end you cut your yarn pull through the yarn through the last loop through the last stitch and that's it you just need to weave in your end and you've got your have a baby blanket ready to use for your own children or to give to someone else's thank you very much for watching i hope you found this tutorial useful as always if you did please don't forget to like this video subscribe share with your friends let me know in the comments below what yarn would you use for this blanket and i'll see you in the next tutorial bye bye